Rolf movement is an educational process based on the principles of Rolfing and focused on assisting us to live easily, comfortably, and harmoniously in our physical bodies. The practical benefits of Rolf movement are so myriad, so hard to describe because they touch every level of our being and our, and our doing. I love Rolf movement work, and one of the reasons I love it um, in not only teaching it, but also practicing it, is it um, helps me drop deeper into myself, and so I have that more connection to who I really am. But Rolf Movement also explores how one can perceive the world. Connection to our clients, getting to know them, their daily life activities, their difficulties, their hopes and dreams, is the basis of our work in Rolf Movement. In this program, we'll introduce you to Levi, Cedar, Jake, and Mary, learn their stories, and see how Rolf Movement helps them find new freedom and ease in their daily lives. So I just moved to Boulder for uh, Rolf in practice. So I went to school here, and then I liked it so much. I like the sunshine and the accessibility of trails and the community that I decided to move um, and set up a practice here. I came to Rolfing because I broke my back, um, kind of in the thoracic vertebrae. I um, fractured it in half, but it stayed together. So I broke an area like behind, you know, like my back in this area. And so you can imagine if you're, if you're running or biking or anything like that, if you can't move through here, you just do this. And then you start to have this really weird movement pattern. So I came to Rolfing and I remember the first session I got up and I was like, I haven't breathed like that in like years. Like that's amazing. Um, as a rolfer, you know, rolf movement is definitely something I want to like incorporate more just because I see the value. And then there's also kind of like the selfish aspect. Like there's still some kinks that I'd like to iron out. I feel like I have a really interesting and varied life. Daily, I do some writing at the computer, and I'm the author of a book called Right Use of Power, The Heart of Ethics, which I teach. Then I also am the owner of a house. I'm the one who has to take care of everything that breaks, do all the gardening, and which I love. That's like my art. I'm 72 years old, and I'm trying to move a, into a little more, a little softer, more graceful, life. Well, I really want to be able to prevent getting this stoop that I notice is start, starting to happen in my shoulders and neck that I see in a lot of older people and I see in pictures of myself and it's shocking to look at it. And I just want to find out how to move in a different way so that that self-corrects and doesn't doesn't increase. I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I enjoy lots of outdoor activities, skateboarding. I like to uh, get in the backcountry a lot. I like to hunt and, yeah, fly fish. I do some Tai Chi and yoga outside. I, gar I, I do a lot of manual labor. Mm -hmm. You can bring your chin down a little bit and back. Currently, I'm at the Rolf Institute. I just finished the first phase. A year from now, I'd like to be starting a practice in Fort Collins. I feel good being active. I've done a lot of high-impact sports and taken a lot of spills. I think some of those things have stuck with me, and as I've gotten older, uh, some of those impacts sort of are coming to the surface a little bit. I'm interested in learning some strategies just that I can bring to my own life, that I can bring to the people that I work with to help them with movement. And that's ultimately, it's, it's those little movements that add up. The string comes from on your body as you backpack. I'll be your candle on the water. I'm in a women's chorus in Denver called Skyline. It's about 140 women and we sing um, four-part harmony in the barbershop style. I'm wanting to join a quartet and the voice part that I sing is the lead, which is the most common one, but they need a tenor. So they're 
trying to encourage me to try singing tenor, which is, it's pretty far out of my range right now. For work, I'm doing massage therapy, going to the Rolf Institute for school. If working with Heather would open up my capacity to take in more air and use that um, in my vocal production, that would be really, really exciting for me. I want to introduce that to all aspects of my life and my work. Rough movement can be taught in a series of classes, a series of individual lessons, or a combination of both. With this group, we began with a class and followed with individual sessions. So today's class is going to be about patterns. When we start to explore rough movement, the, most, the thing that we usually start on first is finding out what the pattern is that you have evolved over your lifetime. All of us have developed over the course of our lives patterns of moving and relating that have evolved from our experiences of birth and early childhood, from our relationships to other people, from the activities we've been involved in, and from traumas we've experienced. Some of our patterns work well for us, but others cause us difficulty and pain. So what Rolf Movement does is it brings your awareness to those things that you've habitually done to keep yourself basically safe on the planet. It's learning what that person's considerations are for trying on a different way of being. Just notice what happens when you bend your toes behind you. We begin to study the pattern by just walking. How does your midsection move, or does it move? Bringing awareness to how different parts of our bodies respond to the movement of walking is a good way to get in touch with our patterns. And now move your awareness up to your upper thorax, your chest. When we get all of these pieces together, we have our presentation. I'm going out in the world. I'm going to meet the faces that I meet. I'm going to fit in. I'm going to get ahead, whatever. And for the purposes of this class, I'd like to call that our act. Okay. You heard this phrase, or get your act together? <laughs> okay. So what I'd like to do today is explore with you what your act is. You're going to make a caricature of your pattern. <laughs> so we're making a caricature of it so that it will be, it will be uh, more obvious. But get into it and see who this is. And be playful. I ask them to give their act a name. The name that spontaneously came was Creature from the Swamp. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, Frankenstein's monster as, <laughs> as I was moving, because this, that's what came to mind, because this side just felt so, like, just tight and, uh... -huh. uh this would be uh, Mr. Fear of Being Hurt. Um, Miss Nudie Belly? <laughs> <laughs> I think this might be dealing with a story that I have of being shy, introverted, not making friends easily, but um, something about this, I just, I have the desire to be like lifted and uh, I want people to think that I have good posture and that I guess that I've got my act together in that way. I just yeah. sort of like Bill As we explore the character, that's what this I facilitate the process by asking several questions. The first is, how does this pattern serve you? Uh, this, this is a very, you all understand, it's a very important question. Because yeah. it's hard to let go of something that's serving you unless you have another option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's hear what, what, you, what this does for you. Like when you're in pain and when you've had injury, uh, you just harden to it. Mm -hmm. and if, mm -hmm. and There's confidence in the lifted posture. Uh -huh. There's some kind of pride and self-worth and ego playing into it. It helps me move around any pain. So if you're so grounded and solid, you can work through anything. Uh -huh. You know, it can make me look very calm and collected uh -huh. when underneath 
I'm swamped. I'm, I'm just swamped. running to catch up and not sure I will be able to catch uh-huh. up. So just like, it's too much. How does this limit you? Feels like constantly being in a swamp. Mm-hmm. Being swamped with so much stuff. Oh, I mean, if you just tighten things up so much, eventually mm-hmm. you become bound by your uh, resoluteness. It's, it's a similar thing, you know, the head down, and uh, it, I think it's limiting because you're, you're not open, you're not to what's going around, and that could mm-hmm. be physically, things are closed in. and. Well, in the exaggerated walking, this just got very tiring, and I'm missing out on, like, the bottom half of the room. It just feels tiring, and it feels fake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is there a fear behind this? I think the fear is being unnoticed, unimportant, and like disconnected. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I would say probably the feeling of being like helpless mm-hmm. or things being outside of being able to control. Like the fear of being hurt is, you know, some of the injuries I've suffered emotionally and physically. I think it's this, this almost global fear that I won't be able to to meet the expectations for myself. Thank you for sharing this, and this is our beginning. Yeah. And I'll be working with each of you on these patterns. And then find the lightest place for both arms. As we begin to explore other options for the patterns that don't work well for us, we look at the way the body relates to gravity. My favorite Ida Rolf quote is, gravity is the therapist. And I think that everything we do is based on that. Becoming fluent in our relationship with gravity is really at the heart of Rolf movement. When we're out of balance, gravity pulls us down. When we're in balance with each segment of the body supported by the one below, gravity actually gives us a lift. As we learn to move in a balanced way, with our actions supported from below, everything becomes easier. Since Cedar's main concern is her rounded shoulders, I begin working with just her arms. So balance point is the lightest place. If you go this way, it's a little heavier. Yeah. If you go this way, it's a little heavier. Yeah. And even if you come out toward me, so finding that lightest place, we almost feel like your arm could just hang there. You wouldn't have to do it. Yeah. And so as I tilt you forward and back, I'm going to find the lightest place just like we did with the arm. Same process. With Cedar, I worked with finding dynamic balance point with her arm and then sitting. With Mary, we're exploring finding the lightest place walking and standing. And just see how much this upper part of your body is behind. Can you, can you see that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So if I put you on top of yourself? Part of the process of changing the pattern is re-educating the kinesthetic sense, the sense we have of where we are in space. You probably feel totally weird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because this is, this is so, yeah, that's good. That's it. But that's important because that's putting a lot of stress here in your neck. Because um, um, you're, you're, can you see what happens to me when I do that? Mm-hmm. And if I come on top of myself, then all of this can ease. Mm. Gravity can be our ally when we use weight instead of muscle in our daily tasks. This is especially important for rolfers and massage therapists, as contact through weight is a softer and deeper connection. Since Jake is studying to be a rolfer, it is important for him to learn how to use his weight rather than his muscle to do his work. I'm going to just use my muscle Mm -hmm. and put weight, put energy into your thighs. Okay. And feel the quality of that contact. So now I'm pretty much working out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to use, remember what we did last time when we were rocking at this hinge? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to use that weight and again make contact. Yeah. Feel the difference? Yeah, and now, 
this is what I want to add for you. Open your eyes. <laughs> okay. And then add the weight of my head. And feel what happens then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, finding this hinge, let me just see you rocking like we were doing last time. Yeah. And now, why don't you put some weight into my thighs? Okay. Keep open here. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's so. This is the pattern we're really looking mm -hmm. to change so that you're not going here, but you're really bringing. Yeah, that's the tendency leaning into yeah. something. Yeah. Like so. Remember everything we worked on about keeping long, letting your chest come up even more. A little more. Okay, now keep that and rock forward at your hip hinge and just drop your weight into my thighs. Good. And now drop the head a little bit. Now this is about as far as we took the head rocking last time, mm -hmm. I think. But now drop it even further. So the weight of your head is, is a tool you can use. Let that weight come through. Yeah. Supporting action in the arms and upper body from below eliminates the strain of gravity pulling on unsupported parts. Here I use the rolfing table to simulate the desk in Cedar's office. Well, one thing you're doing right now as you show me this that's working very well is that you're shifting your weight from, the, mm -hmm. from your feet. So be even more conscious of that. Mm -hmm. So phone's over there. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. I saw you in your garden. Yeah. You know, here you are cutting a bush. So here's the bush. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I stand here with my feet together and reach for the bush, yeah. the weight of my thorax is hanging off my low back. Mm -hmm. But if I take a step toward the bush, now mm -hmm. the weight of my thorax is supported by this foot. And mm -hmm. I am not straining in the same way. Try that. The bush. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna yeah step forward and then lean over like you're try even keeping that front leg a little straighter unless you need to get down low yeah and just chip, clip your bush yeah and if you let this heel come up a little bit oh. you see how oh. that yeah. yeah and say that it's tough and you want some weight behind it push with that toe hinge and put the whole weight of your body mm -hmm. behind your clippers mm -hmm. we start to notice habits in which we fight gravity here Cedar is beginning to sit up in direct opposition to the gravitational field. <laughs> straight, gravity is coming straight down. So in order to move comfortably or harmoniously with gravity, we want to cut through the fields of gravity when we go to lift something, like our body in this case, or a heavy object. So just roll toward me, dropping your legs toward the floor. And just come up this way. And you don't have that moment of strain. Another option we explore to shift pattern is fluidity in movement. We look for places in the body that are still or held. Ideally, the whole fascial web ripples in response to any movement that we make, including the movement of our breath. When the ripple of movement runs into a place of holding in the body, there is impact. And where there is impact, there is tension and often pain. With Rolf movement, we discover these holding patterns, often unconscious, and invite release and fluidity. So this space under here, even more. Go wild. Yeah, exaggerate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gonna go way up. I'm not gonna leave you here. Okay. Take, a, take a breath now and see how that feels. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you notice? Um, a lot more expansion in here. Yeah, yeah. So bring your chin back down where it was. So that's here, Mary chest. experiences the contrast so between her old and new pattern. So that's your habitual spot. Wow. Yeah, and feel how this is closed now, right under here. If you come up a little bit, that space opens. <laughs> So cool. <laughs> What's happening? That's that's just so impressive to me. Yeah, it's big. So subtle. Yeah, yeah it's not and subtle. powerful. <laughs> it's not subtle. A subtle change. It so seems. yeah, in Ralph movement, lots of times moving this far, you can't see it from the last row in the balcony, but <laughs> it makes a big difference. 
Because Levi had had a back injury, I worked with him to restore fluidity in his spine, bringing his awareness to the axis of rotation of each individual vertebra. Unique axis of rotation for each of your lumbar so that they're not functioning as a block, as a lot of people will see that. But each one has, it's like the slats on a roll top desk, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? How they go up, 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 up. Or Venetian blinds, the same thing. And tilt your tail up so that this vertebra drops into the table. Micro movements are an effective tool for increasing fluidity. They act like a solvent, dissolving patterns of tension and stress. Now let's play with micro movements for the hand. You know, our fingers can get so stiff with all the things we do, and especially typing on computer keys. And what I'm up to here is to just relax the arm enough that the shoulder will drop back. So as we soften the hand, fingers, palmar fascia, wrist bones. So we just try and let them become fronds of seaweed. As we learn to move from core, we literally physically center ourselves. Rolf movement can be seen as a transformation from holding tension in the outer body, what we call body armor, to living from fluid strength at the core. We begin by bringing awareness to the core. It feels like anytime you stretch anything else, except this is like really, really deep inside. Uh, it feels like I'm stretching this uh, space inside that uh, doesn't get a lot of attention or mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So leaning forward a little at the hip hinge and still keep your length here. A little bit more length in the chest. Yeah, that's it. How's that feeling to you? Feels good. So I'm feeling now you're a little more present. We learn to move from our center to bring our whole body to whatever we are doing. Often in daily life, we function with contradiction of direction in our bodies. Part of our body moves away from what we are doing, or we intend to walk forward but lean back. We move to do something, but part of our body pulls away from our task in the opposite direction. So right now, you've got, you're going this way, but a lot of your body is pointing yeah. that way. Can I get behind it? Yeah, more so and... what I would suggest is that you come over here yeah. since you're going to go this way. Yeah, okay. Focusing our whole body in the direction of our intention brings clarity and ease to all that we do. I, I bring my whole self to her. It's a whole other level of connection mm -hmm. on every level, not just the physical. So. As old patterns are released, there is often an emotional shift. What is it? What is it about lifting your chest? Does it, does it feel vulnerable? Or? It's the way it's been. I heard, I don't know, maybe that's... Yeah, it feels safer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Time to come out of your shell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's have it. <laughs> Even more open. Open, yeah. And then rock at the hip edge. Yeah, that's it. Okay, take a break now. Stop. Take a breath. Yeah, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, just, this is big stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take some breath. Just find your core breath and let it settle for a minute because we're disrupting your pattern rather seriously. And then she invited us to explore the emotional essence of that that, that plays into that pattern. Being unnoticed, unimportant, and like disconnected. And we went over a lot of areas of like past trauma that I don't think I really realized were traumatic events for me. I thought they were just kind of like a life, you know. When I was a kid, I had this serious injury where it landed on my face. They essentially had to push all my teeth back into place and sew up like my lip and all this kind of stuff. You know, Heather got to a point where she's like, you know, 
when you were that age, you didn't really have the skills or kind of like the wherewithal to deal with that, you know, so you had to be stronger than you were capable of at the time, which is really difficult. And I remember getting done with that session and I went into the bathroom afterwards and I just started crying. <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm still kind of like, what happened there? <laughs> The major benefit of Rolf Movement is that it is an educational process that empowers the client to get in touch with the patterns that are difficult for them and teaches them basic principles and tools to create new options for themselves. She was working kind of like the hip flexor region. She was you know, asked me to do one thing and I kept doing a completely different thing. I'm going to have you bring your knee up and over to your chest. Yeah, good. And. You want to keep the lower leg and foot completely relaxed because I'm trying to phase out your quads right now and have you use the psoas for that movement. And I remember she took my hand and she you know, put my hand on um, one of the muscles that she didn't want to move. And then this hand is going to rest here and you're just going to monitor the quadriceps femoris tendon there. Kind of feeling that and making that connection in my head like, oh yeah. And then suddenly I was like, I am like, there's like this brain to muscle connection that it was just so simple and yet so profound. Yeah, I think you're going to find you have more flexibility this way when this isn't wadding up and making a bump in the middle of your hip joint. Okay. This was just like, use different muscles and it becomes easier. And I was like, oh, well, okay, I'll just do that. <clears throat> when you're teaching rough movement, you, you know, you use your hands, and then maybe our hands, and then maybe the client's hands. So that you hand it over. So I'm touching mm. you first, and then I'm going to have you feel it, and then I get out of there so that when you go home, you can work on it for yourself. Her work was more in teaching me and giving me the tools that I need to continue to support um, moving in the right direction and, and giving myself more freedom. So I want to just go back over what we did. We started with you lying down, and we started with finding space under your chin. Part of Rolf movement is this concept of integration, Rolf movement integration. So it's when things come together, it's when we really find and feel who we are. Um, part of integration, I think, is embodiment. Yeah, it's nothing complex, I, I don't think. I mean, I think it's not being so caught up in what's going on around us, not being so caught up in the screen that might be in front of our face or the situation we're in in life that we forget or lose track of our, um, what's going on in our actual body. Um, that I could open up more and allowing that energy from my heart to you know, move through my shoulder, move through my arms and um, in my hands. And so beyond just the working you know, the musculature As our clients move into new options for the patterns that were difficult for them, they find ease and joy in the activities of their daily lives. It was just really powerful, some of the stuff um, that Heather was talking about and mentioned to us, and some of the things that she was able to draw out of us just with movement, you know, how we're walking, how we're feeling, how that's like feeling in our body, and then having us talk about it. And there's so much emotional and psychological backing that creates that pattern. This is an act that I'm putting on, but it's not the authentic me. I guess one of the biggest lessons I learned is that I don't have to be as strong as I think I have to be. I don't have to like try and muscle through stuff or kind of hold things. I can just let stuff flow through. Mm, what do you notice? Instead of pushing the end through here, it mm -hmm. just, it seemed like it just extended naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of like About four days yeah. after that session, I had my weekly <laughs> rehearsal with my chorus. When the warm-ups were just like moving a lot of air and we're trying to warm up into the higher ranges, And where I usually have to stop singing because I feel tension and I just can't get up into the range or I'm also feeling like I'm running out of air. I just felt like I had all this ability to keep going like 
I was just so excited because I had all this vocal freedom. I just wanted to keep going with it. And now I also feel like I just have more awareness of the way that I'm carrying myself. And if I'm slipping back into an old pattern, I have more awareness to, to self-correct. I left that session like feeling really um, changed in a, or at least kind of like I could feel the effect of change coming on, which I really wasn't expecting like that. I do a lot of running, and so I thought I was doing fairly well. You know, like I have my good form, I have all this kind of stuff. And working with Heather, we touched on so many things. And in the time being since then, I've just, it's easier. I can't describe it like I'm going faster, but with less effort. So you feel a little movement there. I was quite amazed at how much shift could happen with just paying attention to one spot or reminding me to put my attention there. And a really amazing shift would take place. Seeing and feeling the connection all the way through my body. So when I was looking at the pictures of myself and seeing this, looking like stooped up old stooped over old lady. But I had this revelation, it isn't at all about moving my shoulders back. My shoulders will go back automatically if I'm all lined up. I believed in Rolf movement, I thought it was a good tool, and now I'm seeing that it's like, it kind of might be the backbone of rolfing. I think that I'm gonna be able to use some of these ideas and techniques to help other people and to help them build awareness in their own body and then that's something that they can use to empower themselves. It, it comes from the heart. I think beauty flows from the heart.